I've enjoyed very much the message that you've heard. It, it stirred me. The wonderful prayer that has been offered by my good friend, Brother Guthrie, and to be in fellowship with you all here tonight. I count it a great honor and a great privilege. And I trust for the time that I stand before you that you will pray for me as you have, Brother Loudermilk, that I might stir you to not anything new in the service of God, but to maybe remind you again and again of what the Lord has done, whether in time or eternity. We can be thankful for that great blessing. And I confess that I don't know it all. I, I wish I knew more than I did. I was preaching a meeting down in the middle of Georgia a week before last. And, and uh, I went to the nursing home in Cochran, Georgia to see a, two or three people that I knew there <clears throat> one afternoon. And I got in all right because the number to get me in was up there. But when I came out, there wasn't any number to get me out. And I looked over at this lady sitting there, and I said, do you know the number to get me out? She said, you don't know very much, do you? I said, I said well, I just don't know the number. I said, I'm going to go ask the nurse. She said, she don't know any more than you do. <laughs> and I've come to find out that when I hear men preach, I always learn. And I'm always stirred to a greater service in the house of God. Call your attention tonight, just briefly, from the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 and beginning with verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked work, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. I preached a funeral this afternoon in Fort Payne and we were there and this man that we conducted the funeral for wasn't a member of any church of any kind and yet he was a very generous man, a great man in, in many ways and it was a strange service to some degree, but the people that were there seemed hungry for some knowledge about the situation that this man was in. He wasn't a member of the church. He had never been very religious and yet very active and very very generous in his blessings toward others. The man that got up before me said, well, I want you to know that this man I've known for many years, one of the most generous men I've ever known, and yet I don't know whether he has ever made a decision for Christ or not. And that stung me just a little, if you want to know the truth. It really did. It stung me just a little. And. Uh, and I knew him and he knew me and he sat down and while they were singing a song he said straighten this out <laughs> so I didn't have to straighten anything out there wasn't anything for me to straighten out but I do believe and I do understand tonight and I want you to understand and I know that you believe and I'm preaching to the choir and I ask him this question Will all 
that Christ reconciled to God be saved. Now, I, I want you to answer that. Yes. Yeah. Will all that Christ reconciled to God be saved? Amen. I affirm that all that Christ reconciled to God shall and will be saved. Amen. Without exception. And I read this text because the Bible tells me it pleased the Father that in Him, that is in Christ, should all fullness dwell. I affirm to you that Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 said, In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Yeah. Now that's not hard to understand. Jesus Christ came and the Bible tells me in uh, second or in Romans chapter 5 and beginning with verse 8 but God commendeth his love toward us. That didn't say God recommended his love now. It said God commendeth his love. That means to bestow by choice. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. Much more then that he is adding to that, being now justified or made just by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. I won't stop here just long enough to say that I get a little out of sorts sometimes with these folks, among, even among our people, that camp on the banks of a no-hell religion. Yeah. I want to tell you today that we have been saved from something. Yes, we have been saved to something, but don't forget we have been saved from something. Amen. We have been saved from that eternal place called hell where all of us deserve. And we have been delivered from that, not because of what you said, what you did, or a decision that you've made. But you've been delivered from that place called hell through the reconciling work of the Blessed Son of God. Yes, sir. Now the Bible says, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God. Brother, I want to tell you tonight that I can stand here and hear this man preach and all these men uh, preach and I'll tell you that I can joy in God. Yes, sir. You know why? Because I'm telling you today that all that he reconciled to God, all that Christ reconciled to God shall and will be saved. Uh, without the loss of one, the possibility of a failure does not exist. Why? Because God commended his his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us much more than being now if I know what the word now means it means now doesn't it you're not going to have to wait till you get to heaven to be justified are oh, you justified right now why because of the blood of his cross you've been reconciled to God you've been justified before God why because of the atoning work the at one month of the atoning work of the son of God you have now received that atoning work that reconciliation oh, that atone for your sins and I affirm to you today that as Christ Jesus uh, came into the world and as he talked to that woman at the well uh, even though she didn't know very much about him thank God he knew about her <laughs> yes sir aren't you glad today my friend listen brother Ronnie I believe the only reason uh, that Jesus went through Samaria that day was to deal with that one woman uh, that one woman was the only reason uh, that he said I must needs go through through Samaria. Oh, that's the only reason that he went back. I'll tell you right now, she is a lot better shape when he left than he was when he got back. Yes, sir. You know why? Because she heard something that she'd never known before. Oh, she'd heard something and seen something oh, that she'd never known before. There was a well of water in her spring
me up unto everlasting life. And thank God she could say, never man spake. Uh, like this man, never man spake. Come see a man uh, that told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Christ? And I tell you today, my friend, uh, when we hear the glorious declaration of the gospel of Christ, it cheers me. I tell you, driving over here across the mountain over there, I got behind a log truck. You don't get behind a log truck coming near my house. You know why? Because you ain't going to get there for three hours. There ain't no place to pass. I said, why in the world did I tell them I'd come? Why in the world? You know, I'm glad to come, man. Yeah, I'm glad. To, you know why? Because I'm stirred. I'm ready to go knocking on doors, aren't you? Yes, sir. I get like that sometimes. I get all built up in the Spirit of God. You know, I've heard Brother David preach. And, I, uh, you know, uh, just the Holy Spirit come down. And uh, God uh, be glorified in the midst of the service. Brother Joe and Brother Ronnie. Uh, uh, these brethren right over here. You know, I've preached with all of them. And for the last 51 years, I've made such a miserable mess in so many ways. But I want to tell you one thing today, my friend. When I sit before those elders uh, 51 years ago, what I believe then, I'm preaching to you right now. And I'm still satisfied with it. Thank God today. It's still good for the soul. It's still good for the child of God. It's still good. And I'll tell you, that's what the church thrived on. Other tribes, the church thrives on that today. That doctrine of Christ uh, that teaches us uh, that all for whom uh, Christ reconciled to God shall be saved. I'll tell you, that just simply means to bring together those that were in enmity. Peace where there was no peace. That's the reason David could speak like Christ in Psalm 69 and 4 said, I restored that which I took not away. I restored that which I took not away. I'll tell you right now, my friend, Jesus Christ restored something. Restored something. There is not a, a record in, in uh, the history of jurisprudence where a legal authority ever required the offended to go to the offender. You hear me? That's not the legal system. It was always that the offender make restitution to the offended. But you know what? When Jesus restored you, the offended first went to the offender. You know that? Sure, that makes sense, doesn't it? Why did the offended have to go to the offender? Because the offender was dead. (laughs) He couldn't come to the offended. Therefore, the offended had to go to the offender. The benefactor gave you something as a beneficiary. Thank God today, my friend, the elect family of God has been given something in Christ that they did not deserve. Now, uh, if God, now let's, let's say, and let's get this before I quit. Now, we said that all that Christ reconciled to God shall be saved. And I asked this missionary Baptist preacher today. Y'all won't know who it was. I didn't even say that. All right. But I did. I said, do you believe that all that Christ reconciled to God will be saved? I said, well, sure. I said, well... When the Bible says to wit, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Does that mean that Christ reconciled all mankind in every age? That's what you preach. He said, I ain't going to answer that question. (laughs) You know why? Why? Because if he said yes, you're going to have to rent hell out. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You've got to take the position uh, that all men will be saved. If that world right there uh, is talking about all of Adam's race, and we believe that Christ reconciled the world uh, to himself, God through Christ reconciled that world, and I want to tell you right now, there's the universalist has the truth. But we know better than that, don't we? Yes, sir. We know better than that. 
I'm telling you right now, the world under consideration right there is all that God gave the Son in the covenant of redemption before the world began. And all of them were reconciled. All of them were atoned for. And thank God today uh, when the Bible says in Hebrews, and you listen to it now, in Hebrews chapter 2, he says, beginning in verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. You know, that folks today, sad to say, they have the idea that there's a race out here going on between the Lord and the devil. And if something don't take place, the devil's going to outdo him some way or another. I got a better story for you, man. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the devil is a defeated foe right now. Yeah. Right now, he's a defeated foe. You know, I'm, I'm bad. To, I, you know, I've never been a good book reader. And you know what I like to do? I like to read the front of the book and the back of the book. And that in between don't mean very much. Well. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you read the end of this book. I'm going to tell you, the devil loses, brother. <laughs> yeah. He's a defeated foe. He hasn't got a chance. You know why? Because I'll tell you why. Uh, there's a God in heaven who uh, delivered his son. Uh, and uh, before men, he went to the cross and reconciled us to God. And because he reconciled us to God, I affirm to you uh, that he himself took part of the same. He took humanity on himself. Don't, anybody, don't let anybody ever stand up here and tell you that Jesus Christ was half God and half man. Because that's not so. He was all God and all man. Yes, sir, he was. Just like Brother Latimer said, when he, in, as far as his humanity was concerned, he was wearied. He was wearied with his journey right there. He wept when his friend Lazarus was dying. He, he, he wept. He had feelings like you and I have feelings. That's absolutely the truth. He took upon himself part of the same. Listen to that. Then he says, and to deliver them who were through fear of death, were all their lifetime subject to bondage. And that's the truth. Bondage. My friend, I want you to understand today that I don't care as free as you are, you still have a bondage about you. You do. And as much as you're in bondage, you've got a freedom about you. You, have, you know when they cast those three Hebrew children in a fiery furnace and they bound them and put them in there, uh, you know they were bound, but in one way they were just as free as they could be. And oh, how wonderful that is. But you have to struggle. Life's a struggle. He talked about it. You know, I've got a new grandbaby. He's just five months old. Bless his heart. Little boy. He is the prettiest baby that has ever been. <laughs> you want me to show you a picture? I've got one on my phone. Amen. Yeah. Everybody's got a phone. Has Take pictures of that. But they had a little episode at the hospital. And in the hospital, and we were there. And the, they had to put him back in the unit. Something happened and it was scared us to death. And I was standing there looking in the window and they raised the curtain and my little fellow brother Joe was struggling, seemed like to breathe. And it just broke my heart. And in a few minutes I walked down the hall to a lady I knew down there that was 103 years old. And she was laying there struggling to breathe. And I thought, Brother David, walking back up the hall, from birth to death, it's a life's a struggle. Yes, sir. It's a struggle. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus had a struggle during his personal ministry. Of course he did. He dealt with those who constantly tried to bring a conflict in his teaching. Uh, constantly they were uh, annoying him. Constantly he came up above against barrier after barrier. Even his disciples forsook him and fled. But I want to tell you right now, he was here. And he was here for the purpose that God sent him for. Yes, sir. And he was going to reconcile his people and atone for their sins. And listen now to what uh, Paul says. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took upon him the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. You hear what that means? What does Paul say in Galatians 3 and 29? If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yeah. 
I'll tell you, Christ Jesus took upon himself that seed. That was his people. He took upon himself that seed. Now listen to it. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, and he was, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. You see what that says? I want to tell you, my friend, I don't know what kind of decision you've made tonight. And I don't care whether you've made a decision. That's not my business. I don't know that. But I'm going to tell you one thing. <laughs> when I got through today, that man's wife said, Brother Ricky, she said, don't ever change what you preach. It was great. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I won't. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not going to change it. Right. I'm satisfied with it. Thank God I believe uh, that all that Christ reconciled to God shall and will be saved. Yeah. In mind of your decision, not going to change it. Yeah. Not one thing. Thank God today for the blessed gospel that testifies to that fact. Thank you and may God bless you. Amen. Amen.